What makes for a really good nonstick pan? So we have three different price points of nonstick pans. We have the T-Fall for $25, the Calphalon for $40, and then the All-Clad for $100. So each of these pans that we are testing today are made without PFOA, which is a harmful chemical sometimes used in manufacturing these types of pans. So never buy a pan that isn't PFOA free. Of course, in my experience at the restaurants, we try not to invest too much money into really expensive nonsticks because typically what happens is, you know, everyone's using it and they get messed up. And then we're, we're gonna have to buy them all over again. So we don't like to invest too much money in them. So I always go for, you know, like a, you know, cheap to mid-tier option and just replace them every time they get scratched. I would say that if you, you're a home cook and you're, you know, taking care of your pans, then you could maybe invest in something a little bit more expensive and nice. So the tests that we're gonna do today are gonna show how the pans do in low heat, medium heat, and high heat. So for the low heat, we'll do an egg test. For medium heat, we'll do pancake. And for high heat, we'll do a fish sear. And of course, for these tests, we're not using any butter, oil, or fat to test the quality of the nonstick. Okay, so starting easy, we are gonna do the egg test on low heat. We're gonna cook two eggs per pan, and the point is that we're coating the entire surface to see how it comes out. Okay, so we got our eggs, and we're gonna start off with our low end, the tea fall. Looks good, typical nonstick. You can see like the edges, they're coming away from the pan. So it's working, it's all good. Well, that came right out, looking good. Pass the egg test. Um, so this is our second option, the Calphalon for $40. And I'm noticing that this actually got really, really hot much quicker than the other one. So when you're doing an omelet, you get this like real thin layer on the sides, which I'm not sure if it's gonna come out or not. No. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> so this is not gonna work. Oh, wh what? This is BS, straight up. It's the same heat as the other one. This is why we do the Kitchen Gadget Test Show. I'm shocked, actually. Okay. Now moving on to the all-clad, which is our most high-end pan. And you can see the skin coming away from the pan, which we didn't see with the Calphalon, which is what should be happening with a nonstick. That's how it should be. It's perfect. Maybe there is a difference. So I am totally shocked because I really thought the egg test was a no-brainer and that they would all work. But obviously we had a lot of differences. Um, starting with the tea fall, um, no residue. It looked really good and it performed quite nicely. Calphalon, not so much. I had a hard time, obviously. And you can still see there's still some left in there. And of course, the all clad, no residue, beautiful omelet, passed with flying colors. So it's surprising that the low end and the high end is kind of equal and the mid tier, it would just didn't work at all. So moving on to our second test, pancakes. We are testing medium heat and we're gonna use pancake batter to see the evenness of the heat and of course the nonstick element. Starting with the tea fall. Okay. The ideal pancake should be a beautiful even sear on both sides. Slightly crispy but still fluffy inside. Okay guys, I'm ready to flip. Now when you see like all these bubbles form, that's when you know you're ready to flip. Beautiful. That was easy. Look at that. That is a nice pancake. And it's like really beautifully even too. Okay. That was easy. Moving on. Now with the Calphalon. The material of the Calphalon is much thinner. No, I got it. So what we're noticing with the Calphalon is that the material is really thin, so it's getting hotter a lot quicker. So we're gonna redo the test at a lower heat. Okay. Even at a lower heat, you still I'm still hearing the sizzle. Time to flip. I mean, it is nonstick, but it's not as smooth as our first pan. I mean, yeah, you see rings. You know, it's not like a even beautiful color. Okay. 
There we go. There's some residue. Okay, so now moving on to the all clad. Yep, feel smooth. Look at that. I see some residue on the pan. I mean, it's like really subtle, but there's still some in there. Okay, moment of truth, guys. The results. Starting with the tea fall. Our pancake looks beautiful, very, very even. Okay, so our calphalon, which we had trouble with, so we had to make the pancake twice because it was heating up too quickly. Our pancake is also very blotchy, and you can see these like rings of unevenness. And now for our all clad, you can see the pancake looks pretty nice, but there's a little bit of unevenness, but overall not bad. But I can see a little bit of residue left on the pan. See? This is why I said you, you shouldn't spend so much money on nonstick. The T-Fall is winning by far. Now moving on to high heat. It's gonna smell like fish. We're all gonna smell fishy. <laughs> For our next test, we're searing fish on high heat. So this is a T-Fall. Gonna cook some salmon on skin side down. All right. I don't know, does that look burnt slightly? Moving on to our calphalon pan. Nice crispy. And it didn't stick. But this is good. This is done. I'm very confused by that. Moving on to our most expensive pan, doll clad. Like it's blotchy, it's too blotchy everywhere. I mean, it's crispy. It's not burnt, it's just like a little bit surprising. Um, obviously, we're not using any oil or fat in the pan and we're just searing the salmon as is. So the tea fall and the all clad kind of had like similar results in terms of the evenness of the skin. So you see like little pockets, similar patterns on both of these. Whereas the Calphalon was surprisingly pretty nice and even. You can see that the Siri is nice and even, it's crispy all throughout. They all did pretty well with the nonstick element, um, except for the T-Fall. Surprisingly, you see a little bit of the residue left. There was a tiny bit of sticking happening. The clear winner, I would say, is the Calphalon, um, which is really interesting because they, it failed the other two tests. Um, but in terms of the fish searing beautifully and evenly, I think it did the best job. We are going to test the durability of these. So we will take a steel wool and rotate 25 times, and then we will use a metal spatula and go back and forth 25 times. Nonstick pans have a reputation of being not so durable, so that's why we're doing this test. Do not do this at home. You should never use metal on your nonstick, but for testing purposes, we must do it. And of course, for the last test, our durability test, I would say the T-Fall was a clear winner. Not much residue on the pan, so pleasantly surprised. All right guys, final thoughts. We went through all the tests. You really don't want to spend that much money on non-sticks because honestly, for $25, this does the best job. So why go and spend you know, $40 to $100 on something that doesn't work as well? The T-Fault is amazing, it did a great job, clear winner.